Yo yo, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a fundamental analysis on analog devices and to be honest it's the first time I'm hearing of this company so I will be doing an analysis that is on a pure numbers perspective and I'm very excited for this one because the name analog devices sounds like it's going to be a dying company but I took a quick look before actually doing this video and analog devices is actually a growing company so let's start so analog devices right now is trading at $196 per share multiply that by its total outstanding shares we get a market cap of $97 billion and its enterprise value is $103 billion and the difference of $6 billion is actually adding debt and minusing off cash so let's take a look at the income statement first thing we take a look at is the revenue and i always say i like my revenues to double once every seven years which indicates or is the benchmark for a good company for me and as we can see over here in the trailing 12 months it is at 11.5 b and back in 2016 to 2017 it is only at 3.4 to 5.2 b which is of course easily a double so revenues are growing pretty nicely overall but of course, there's a slight dip from 2023 to right now. Gross profit seems to be very, very high, currently at 7.2B. Let's compare that to its total revenues. We can see that gross profit margin is staying somewhat the same at around 60 to 65%, which is of course very high. Operating income right now is at 3.4B. Interest expense seems to be somewhat the same at around 250 to 300 million since 2017. Earnings from continuing operations and net income is the same and it is right now at 2.8 billion. Moving on, we can see that revenue per share numbers is still at a double if we compare 2023 to 2016. But if we compare today's numbers to the 2017 numbers, then it is not at a double. And that is of course due to share dilution. In 2014, they had outstanding shares of 313 million and right now it is sitting at right around 500 million. So over the course of a decade, actually this amount of share dilution is considered quite a lot. If we take 499 divided by 313, we can see that they have diluted shares by around 59% since 2014. However, some good news is that it seems like the peak for outstanding shares was at 2022 and that number has since slowly started to come down. Diluted EPS right now at $5.60 and we can see that dividends per share has been increasing over the years as well at right around 2 times every 7 years. If we compare $1.68 to $3.44, we can see that it is just nice a double. And same thing for 2017 to its trailing 12 months, it is about a double, not quite there yet but they have not yet completed the fiscal year at the time of recording this video because it seems like their fiscal year ends in October or November and right now we are in March. So I am quite surprised by their payout ratio ranging from 70% to 50% because I would assume that if they are a company that is growing at a pretty decent rate that they would actually benefit more from reinvesting back into the business rather than paying out to shareholders as dividends. But it seems like the management has decided that paying out the dividends would be a better choice. Maybe they are in an industry that doesn't grow as fast with the help of more capital. R&D expenses right now is at around 1.6B. Now let's move on to its balance sheet. Total cash and short term investments at 1.3B. Total current assets at 44 and total assets at 48 billion. We can see that of the 48 billion, 26 billion is in goodwill, and goodwill is likely not tangible assets, meaning to say that if the company is in financial distress, it may or may not be written off. And also there's a huge jump from 2020 to 2021 in terms of goodwill, so I wonder what that one-off number is. So if you are going to invest in analog devices, I would suggest that you figure what this number is. Total current liabilities at 2.9B and total liabilities at 12.8B. A net debt of right now at 5.7 billion. And we always compare net debt to its free cash flow or net income. 
Some people like to calculate net debt to market cap. However, I think that's a less accurate way to measure if the company is able to service its debts. Comparing it to the actual cash flow that a company generates seems to make more sense because it disregards the current stock price or valuation that the market gives to any particular company. So 5.7B in net debt, let's compare it to its cash flow. So we can see that net income in the trailing 12 months is at 2.8B meaning to say that the company can have zero net debt if analog devices decided to use all its net income for around slightly over two years it will be able to reduce net debt to basically zero suggesting that of course analog devices has a very healthy balance sheet and are likely to be able to pay off its debt moving on let's take a look at levered free cash flow we can see that in the trailing 12 months it is at 2.9 billion which is higher than its current trailing 12 months of net income of 2.8B, suggesting that net income is not really inflated. Because sometimes companies report a very high net income number, but they do not actually have the cash flow to back that number up, suggesting that they are sort of inflating their net income number, making their price to earnings ratio look good when in actual fact they did not have real earnings or free cash flow coming into the company. So finally, let's take a look at their valuation and growth before I give you guys my fair value estimation of analog devices. So according to Seeking Alpha, their gap and non-gap PE is at 21 and 35 respectively. There's a pretty huge difference, so I'm going to manually calculate it. So their market cap is right now at 97B, so we just need to divide it by its trailing 12 months of net income. So let's take 97 divided by 2.8 and we get 34.6. So it is likely that this number is more accurate. And honestly, at a PE ratio of 35, I would consider analog devices to be overvalued because I've seen companies growing at a faster pace than analog devices and I wouldn't give those companies above a 30 PE as well. So a 35 PE for analog devices is definitely overvalued. In my opinion next let's take a look at their growth so revenue is growing at a kager of 15.9 percent in the past decade and a 15.9 percent kager is a very very good rate anything above 10 i consider it to be good so 16 percent is definitely very good net income also increasing at a kager of 15 percent which like i said anything above 10 is very good and levered free cash flow increasing faster than net income at 18 percent which is I'm repeating myself at this point very good so now let me share with you guys how i'm going to come about my fair value estimation for analog devices i think analog devices is growing at a very fast pace when we consider numbers in this decade however it also seems to me like in the past one or two years their growth has been slowing down by quite a bit and i do not like to factor in growth in my fair value estimation because when we factor in future numbers and if they do not deliver then it is very likely that our investment becomes very overvalued. For example, if you bought in 2022, expecting numbers to increase like it did from 2021, you're likely expecting a revenue number of upwards of 15 billion. However, in 2023, they only did 12.3 billion. And of course, then you're overvaluing your estimation for analog devices and likewise for other companies as well. So personally for me, I will be giving analog devices a PE multiple of 12 to 16 or a free cash flow multiple of 12 to 16. Of course, respecting the growth that they have done in the past decade, but yet at the same time, not factoring in that they will do the same for the next decade. So based on an EPS value, I will take $5.60. And when we take 5.6 times 12, we will get 67. So this is, so this is my lower fair value estimate for analog devices based on an earnings per share basis and when we take 560 times 16 we get $89.60 so based on an EPS basis $67 to $89 per share which is of course very far off its current share price of 196 and now if we compare that to its free cash flow per share let's calculate the higher end of this range 16 times 6.49 we get 103 dollars per share so my fair value estimation for analog devices is 67 dollars to 103 dollars per share meaning to say that analog devices would have to drop by around 50 percent to hit the top end range of my fair value estimation suggesting that to me analog devices right now is a sell 
However, I also do want to say that if you have a reason to believe that analog devices will do as well as it did in the past decade, in this coming decade, then you will definitely have a higher fair value estimation of analog devices because if they're able to really 4x its revenues in the next decade, because if they're really able to 4x revenues and earnings in the next decade, then let's say even if you buy at a multiple of 30 times earnings, in 10 years, the PE would be 7.5 based on the amount that you paid for. And then of course, if they're able to continue that growth for another decade, then you're looking at a PE of under 2 for however much you paid for. But of course, for me, I do not like to factor in growth and therefore I have a multiple of 12 to 16 as my fair value range. And like I always say, the interpretation of numbers is an art and not a science. So everyone has their own different interpretation on a company's fundamentals. This video is my opinion and not advice. And with that said, I thank you guys for watching. Please help to like the video and subscribe if you're a fundamental investor looking for fundamental analysis. Bye-bye.